Welcome to Snoozecast, the podcast designed to help you fall asleep. Find us on snoozecast.com and follow us on Instagram at snoozecast to find behind the scenes content. If you enjoy our show, please write a review on the Apple Podcasts app. Please know that we read and appreciate every single one. If you would like to get an email once a week with upcoming sleep stories and other news, subscribe to the Snooze Letter at snoozecast.com. This episode is brought to you by our Patreon supporters and by Bobbing for Apples. Tonight, we'll read from Games for Halloween, written by Mary Blaine and published in 1912. It describes step by step how one would throw a Halloween themed party at this time. Traditional Halloween activities include trick or treating, or the related guising and souling, attending Halloween costume parties, carving pumpkins or turnips into jack o' lanterns, lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, divination games, playing pranks, visiting haunted attractions, telling scary stories, as well as watching horror films. Join us every Wednesday this month for Snoozecast's third annual Classic Horror Sleep Story Series. Let's get cozy. Close your eyes. Relax your body into the softness of your bed. Now, take a few deep breaths. Games for Halloween Halloween is the last night of October, and no holiday in all the year is so informal or so marked by fun both for grown-ups as well as children as this one. On this night, there should be nothing but laughter, fun, and mystery. It is the night when fairies dance, ghosts, witches, and mischief-making elves wander around. It is the night when all sorts of charms and spells are invoked for prying into the future by all young folks, and sometimes by folks who are not young. In getting up a Halloween party, everything should be made as secret as possible, and each guest bound to secrecy concerning the invitations. Any of the following forms of invitations might be used. Witches and choice spirits of darkness will hold high carnival at my house. Wednesday, October 31st at 8 o'clock. Come prepared to test your fate. Costume, witches, ghosts, etc., Miss Ethel Jones will expect to see you at her Halloween party, Wednesday, October 31st at 8 o'clock. She begs that you will come prepared to participate in the mystery and rites of All Hallows' Eve. So come prepared to learn your fate. The room, or rooms in which most of the games are to be played, should be decorated as grotesquely as possible with jack-o'-lanterns made from apples, cucumbers, squash, pumpkins, etc., with incisions made for eyes, nose, and mouth, and a lighted candle placed within. A skull and crossbones placed over the door entering the house 
would be very appropriate. The hall should be in total darkness, except for the light coming from the jack-o'-lanterns of all shapes and sizes in various places. Autumn leaves, green branches, apples, tomatoes, and corn should also play an important part in the decorations. Black and yellow cheesecloth or crepe paper make very effective and inexpensive decorations. The dining room should be decorated with autumn leaves, goldenrod, strings of cranberries, etc. For a table centerpiece, a large pumpkin could be used with the top cut off and partly filled with water in which a large bunch of goldenrod could be placed. Bay leaves can be scattered over the table. Another idea for a centerpiece is a large pumpkin jack-o'-lantern, the top cut in large points with small chocolate mice in the notches and scampering down the sides of the pumpkin held in place by long pins or a little glue and over the table. Place cards representing pumpkins, black cats, witches' hats, witches, brownies, etc. are appropriate. If one is not an artist in watercolor painting, some of the cards could be cut from colored bristol board or heavy paper. The witches' hats of black or brown paper with a red ribbon band. The cats of black paper showing a back view may have a red or yellow ribbon necktie. The pumpkins of yellow paper with the sections traced in ink or notched a trifle and black thread drawn between the notches. The dining room should also be in total darkness, except for the light given by the jack-o'-lanterns until the guests are seated when they should unmask. The supper could be served in this dim light, or the lights turned up and the room made brilliant. After the supper is over, and while the guests are still seated, a splendid idea would be to extinguish all the lights and to have one or more of the party tell ghost stories. Have a large pumpkin on a stand or table from which hangs as many ribbons as there are guests. Having one end of the ribbon attached to a small card in the pumpkin on which may be a little watercolor sketch of pumpkin, apples, witch, ghost, or other appropriate design together with a number. Let each guest draw a ribbon from the pumpkin and find their partner by number. Another suggestion is to have the hall totally dark with the door ajar and no one in sight to welcome the guests. As they step in, they are surprised to be greeted by someone dressed as a ghost who extends their hand which is covered with wet salt. The following games and tests of fate and fortune will furnish entertainment for children small and children of a larger growth of course, prying into the future with these tests at any other time, they may not prove invaluable. But on the eve of All Saints' Day, when all the elves, the fairies, goblins and hobgoblins are at large playing pranks and teasing and pleasing, why should they not come true? Walnut Boats Open English walnuts, remove meat, and in each half shell, fasten short pieces 
of differently colored Christmas candles, each of which is to be named for a member of party, and, after lighting, set afloat in large pan or tub of water. The behavior of these tiny boats reveals the future of those for whom they are named. If two glide on together, their owners have a similar destiny. If they glide apart, so will their owners. Sometimes candles will huddle together as if talking to one another, while perchance one will be left alone, out in the cold, as it were. Again, two will start off, and all the rest will closely follow. The one whose candle first goes out is destined to be old bachelor or maid. These nutshell boats may also be made by pouring melted wax into halves of walnut shells in which are short strings for wicks. Dumb Cake Each one places a handful of wheat flour on a sheet of white paper and sprinkles it over with a pinch of salt. Someone makes it into dough, being careful not to use spring water. Each rolls up a piece of dough, spreads it out thin and flat, and marks initials on it with a new pin. The cakes are placed before fire, and all take seats as far from it as possible. This is done before 11 p.m., and between that time and midnight, each one must turn the cake once. When the clock strikes 12, the future wife or husband of one who is to be married first will enter and lay a hand on the cake marked with the name. Throughout the whole proceeding, not a word is spoken, hence the name dumb cake. If supper is served before 11.30, dumb cake should be reserved for one of the after-supper tests. Halloween Souvenir Game Suspend apples by means of strings in the doorway or from the ceiling at a proper height to be caught between the teeth. The first successful player receives a prize. These prizes should be Halloween souvenirs, such as emery cushions of silk representing tomatoes, radishes, apples, pears, pickles, or pen wipers representing brooms, bats, cats, witches, etc. Flower test. A bowl is filled tightly with flour. During the process of filling, a wedding ring is inserted vertically in some part of it. The bowl, when full, is inverted upon a dish and withdrawn, leaving the mound of flour on the dish. Each guest cuts off with a knife a thin slice which crumbles into dust. The guest who cuts off the slice containing the ring will be married first. Lover's Test A maid and youth each places a chestnut to roast on the fire side by side. If one hisses and steams, it indicates a fretful temper in owner of the chestnut. If both chestnuts equally misbehave, it augurs strife. If one or both pop away, it means separation. But if both burn to ashes tranquilly, side by side, 
a long life of undisturbed happiness will be the lot of the owners. These portentous omens are fitly defined in the following lines. These glowing nuts are emblems true of what in human life we view. The ill-matched couple fret and fume and thus in strife themselves consume or from each other wildly start and with a noise forever part. But see the happy, happy pair of genuine love and truth sincere with mutual fondness while they burn still to each other kindly turn and as the vital sparks decay, together gently sink away, till life's fierce trials being past, their mingled ashes rest at last. Perplexing Hunt In this game, the seeker for a prize is guided from place to place by Doggerels as the following, and is started on his hunt with this rhyme. Perhaps you'll find it in the air. If not, look underneath your chair. Beneath his chair he finds the following. No, you will not find it here. Search the clock and have no fear. Under the clock he finds. You will have to try once more. Look behind the parlor door. Tied to the doorknob, he discovers. If it's not out in the stable, seek beneath the kitchen table. Under the kitchen table, he finds another note, which reads, If your quest remains uncertain, you will find it neath a curtain. And here his quest is rewarded by finding the prize. Apple Seeds Apple seeds act as charms on Halloween. Stick one on each eyelid and name one home and the other travel. If seed named travel stays on longer, you will go on a journey before the year expires. If home clings better, you will remain home. Again, Take all the apple seeds, place them on back of outspread left hand, and with loosely clenched right hand, strike the palm of the left. This will cause some, if not all of the seeds to fall. Those left on the hand show the number of letters you will receive the coming fortnight. Should all seeds drop, you must wait patiently for your mail. Put twelve apple seeds carefully on one side while you cut twelve slips of blank paper exactly alike, and on one side of each write the name of a friend. Turn them all over with blanks uppermost and mix them so that you will not know which is which. Then holding seeds in your left hand, repeat, one I love, two I love, three I love, I say, four I love with all my heart, five I cast away, six he loves, seven she loves, eight they both love, nine he comes, ten he tarries, eleven he courts, and twelve he marries. Stop at each line to place a seed on a paper and turn slip over to discover the name of one you love or cast away. Continue matching apple seeds with papers as you count until all twelve seeds and twelve papers are used. Hiding Ring, Thimble, and Penny Hide a ring, thimble, 
and a penny in the room. To the one who finds the ring, a speedy marriage is assured. A thimble denotes a life of single blessedness, and to the penny promises wealth. Pulling Kale All are blindfolded and go out singly or in hand in hand to the garden. Groping about, they pull up the first stalk of kale or head of cabbage. If the stalk comes up easily, the sweetheart will be easy to win. If the reverse, hard to win. The shape of the stump will hint at the figure of a prospective wife or husband. Its length will suggest age. If much soil clings to it, the life partner will be rich. If not, poor. Finally, the stump is carried home and hung over the door. The first person outside of the family who passes under it will bear a name whose initial is the same as that of the sweetheart. Nuts to Crack Pass pencils and paper to each guest with the following written upon it. 1. A dairy product. 2. Vegetable. 3. A country. 4. A girl's name. Five. A structure. Six. A name often applied to one of our presidents. Seven. Every ocean has one. Eight. That which often holds a treasure. Nine. The name of two boys. Ten. A letter of the alphabet and an article made of tin. Explain that the above describes ten different nuts which they are to guess. The nuts described are 1. Butternut 2. Peanut 3. Brazil nut 4. Hazelnut. 5. Walnut. 6. Hickory nut. 7. Beech nut. 8. Chestnut. 9. Filbert. 10. Pecan. A prize may be awarded to the one first having correct answers. Raisin Race A raisin is strung in the middle of a thread a yard long, and two persons take each an end of string in mouth. Whoever, by chewing string, reaches the raisin first, has a raisin, and will be first wedded. What's my thought like? The players sit in a circle, and one of them asks the others, What's my thought like? One player may say, A monkey. The second, A candle. The third, A pin. And so on. When all the company have compared the thought, to some object. The first player tells them the thought. Perhaps it is the cat, and then asks each in turn, why is it like the object they compared it to? Why is my cat like a monkey? is asked. The other player might answer, because it is full of tricks. Why is my cat like a candle? Because its eyes glow like a candle in the dark. Why is my cat like a pin? Because its claws scratch like a pin.
Anyone who is unable to explain why the thought resembles the object he mentioned must pay a forfeit. Snapdragon The dragon consists of half a pint of ignited brandy or alcohol in a dish. As soon as brandy is aflame, all lights are extinguished and salt is freely sprinkled in dish, imparting a corpse-like pallor to every face. Candied fruits, figs, raisins, sugared almonds, etc. are thrown in, and guests snap for them with their fingers. The person securing most prizes from flame will meet their true love within the year. Consequences One of the most popular games at a party is certainly Consequences. This is a very old favorite, but has lost none of its charms with age. The players sit in a circle. Each person is provided with a half sheet of no paper and a pencil, and is asked to write on the top one or more adjectives, then to fold the paper over so that what has been written cannot be seen. Every player has to pass his or her paper onto the right-hand neighbor, and all have then to write on the top of the paper, which has been passed by the left-hand neighbor, to the name of the gentleman. After having done this, the paper must again be folded and passed on as before. This time must be written three, one or more adjectives, then four, a lady's name, five, where they met, six, what he gave her, seven, what he said to her, eight, what she said to him. 9. The consequence. And lastly, 10. What the world said about it. Be careful that every time anything has been written, the paper is folded down and passed on to the player on your right. When everyone has written what the world says, the papers are collected, and one of the company proceeds to read out the various papers, and the result may be something like this. The horrifying and delightful Mr. Brown met the charming Miss Phillips in Westminster Abbey. He gave her a flower and said to her, How's your mother? She said to him, not for Joseph. The consequence was they danced the hornpipe, and the world said, just what we expected. Riddles Few children think they will ever tire of playing games. But all the same, towards the end of a long evening, spent merrily in dancing and playing, the little ones get too wary to play any longer, and it is very difficult to keep them amused. Then comes the time for riddles. The children may sit quietly around the room, resting after their romps and laughter, and yet be kept thoroughly interested, trying to guess riddles. It is, however, very difficult to remember a number of good and laughable ones. So we will give a list of some, which will be quite sufficient to puzzle a room of little folks for several hours. An old woman in a red cloak was passing a field 
in which a goat was feeding. What strange transformation suddenly took place. The goat turned to butter, but her, and the woman into a scarlet runner. Why does a duck go into the water? For divers reasons. Spell blind pig in two letters. PG, a pig without an eye. Which bird can lift the heaviest weights? The crane. Why may carpenters reasonably believe there is no such thing as stone? Because they never saw it. What is that which is put on the table and cut, but never eaten? A pack of cards. Why is a dog biting his tail a good manager? Because he makes both ends meet. Which is the left side of a plum pudding? That which is not eaten. Why is a fishmonger never generous? Because his business makes him sell fish. What is it that which works when it plays, and plays when it works? A fountain. What is the keynote to good manners? Be natural.